Good morning, class. Today we're going to talk about Battle Challenge and how to not suck at it. So let's get into it. So today we're talking about battle challenge and as per usual, I've got a ton of tips for how to score higher, which we'll get into after a quick overview. If you're just looking for the tips and tricks, there are timestamps in the video description. All right, let's break it down. So like Spec Ops, battle challenge is also a ranked game mode, meaning you can replay it as much as you'd like in pursuit of a good score. It also means you'll receive ranked rewards at the end of each week. However, unlike the other game modes, battle challenge does not include a daily reset. You aren't required to do any amount of battle challenge each day, and in fact, you'll often skip it most days. Just make sure you're happy with your final score at the end of the week. It's definitely worth battling your way up the ladder as high as you can, though, because each battle provides rewards for your first completion each week. Whether we're talking the weekly first completion rewards or the rank rewards for battle challenge, it all boils down to cores. The rank payout rewards two to four star core boxes at the lower ranks and three to five star core boxes at the higher ranks. As for the weekly first time completion rewards, you'll get a ton of squad XP as well as an assortment of crystals, gold, two to four star core boxes, three to five star core boxes, and dimension box tickets based on how high you manage to climb. While the dimension box has a chance to drop other items, including sign particles, training manuals, potential reports, enhancers, and squad power items, the most likely things to pull are cores. If you're going to be busy a given week or you're just feeling lazy, you can spend 200 crystals on the pass ticket, which will automatically award you with a one star completion for every stage you've successfully completed previously. It's a convenient way to collect the rewards right away at the start of the week, but it's a total waste of crystals if you're going to play through it anyway, so I don't recommend doing this. We've already discussed cores in a previous video, but here's a super quick refresher. Cores improve battle badges. High level battle badges have one to two color coded slots for adding cores. Cores come in four colors, red, blue, green, and yellow. Red cores can either add attack or critical rate. Blue cores can either add defense or dodge. Green cores can either add defense, pierce, or critical damage. And yellow cores can either add health or health recovery. The only other thing worth mentioning when it comes to cores is that you can combine lower star cores into higher star cores at the console on the map labeled combined cores. Be aware though, it gets really expensive and your odds get really terrible toward the higher end. Anyway, when it comes to battle challenge, it's actually pretty simple. Well, simple to explain, that is. The final stages of battle challenge, I feel, are hands down some of the most challenging content in the game. Battle challenge is structured like a ladder, which has 30 stages as of this recording. Every batch of five stages follows the same pattern. The first battle is against a horde of regular villains. The second battle against regular villains and an elite villain. The third battle is against a group of playable characters from a specific region. The fourth battle is against several enemies and a non-prime most wanted target. And the fifth battle is against several enemies and a prime most wanted target, aka a supervillain. A couple quick clarifications. While you'll face three enemy playable character heroes in the lower stages, the stage 28 battle pits you up against four at once. Additionally, while you'll face a single supervillain in the lower stages, the stage 25 and stage 30 battles pit you up against two supervillains at once, which can get pretty tricky. Every stage has three objectives, and the first objective is always clear the challenge. As long as you manage to clear the challenge, you can collect the first time clear rewards for that week. You'll also receive bonus points for how quickly you can clear the stage, as well as for accomplishing the other objectives. Due to that fact, it's common for newer players to make their battle challenge push toward the end of the week, as that's when they're at their strongest and therefore able to clear the stages as quickly as possible. When it comes to the other two objectives, they can be any of the following. Clear within X number of seconds, less than X number accumulated damage, maintain X percent HP or higher, medkit used less than X number of times, use skill less than X number of times, guard broken less than X number of times, Dodge used less than X number of times, clear without guard break, do not use escape skill, and do not use ultimate skill. Just to clarify something that I think is worded terribly, in this game, escape skill refers specifically to a knockdown recovery or a guard break recovery. It does not include using dodges. You know, the skill that you press to escape things. Anyway, figured I'd mention that. Anyway, that concludes our overview of battle challenge. So now let's get into the good stuff how to be awesome at Battle Challenge. As I previously mentioned, Battle Challenge can be incredibly difficult, especially in the later stages. Do not expect to clear all 30 stages in your first week. That's not happening. Anyway, in no particular order, here are some pro tips. Pro tip number one, 
do an initial speed run. I recommend ignoring the objectives during your first run through because you get bonus points for your fastest clear time. So throw on the Sonic X theme song and push the pace. Go Pro tip number two, split up the objectives. While some games require you to meet all the requirements to get the full amount of stars, Marvel Future Revolution is surprisingly merciful. You can accomplish the bonus objectives on separate attempts and still get full credit. Let's say you're struggling with a stage requiring you to not use your ultimate and to use fewer than eight medkits. You can dedicate one attempt to not using your ultimate while consuming as many medkits as you need. Then you can go again and focus on your medkit consumption without worrying about pressing your ultimate. So split up those objectives. While we're on the subject of being conservative with your medkits, pro tip number three, manually activate your medkits. By default, your character will consume a medkit anytime they drop below 75% health. You can actually adjust this by going into your settings where you can change the threshold to 50%, 25%, or disable this feature entirely. By choosing when to use a medkit, you can ensure that you don't exceed your limit. Just remember to re-enable this feature afterward if you normally prefer it. Pro tip number four, bring the right skills. Some stages will see you facing hordes of weak enemies while others might pit you against a dangerous supervillain. Don't be afraid to dedicate one of your skill sets to battle challenge, at which point you can customize your skills for each battle. Facing waves of enemies, bring lots of AOE abilities for the best clear time. Trying to stay above a certain health percent? Bring any skills that grant defensive buffs. Trying to clear the stage within a set amount of time? Bring your hardest hitting skills. Give yourself the best odds. On that note, pro tip number five, bring the right equipment. Just like with the previous tip, don't be afraid to adapt to your opponents. If you need to stay above a certain amount of health, equip some extra defense, dodge, or HP. For clear speed, villain damage increase is super effective. For the supervillains, swapping in a bit of supervillain damage increase or decrease can make all the difference. Go the extra step and look over your costumes, badges, and omega cards to make sure you're dressed for success. Pro tip number six, enhancers are your friends. Enhancers last for five minutes and boost your HP, defense, attack, and critical damage significantly. High-end enhancers will provide 15% boost to those primary stats and 20% additional critical damage. These can easily make the difference when it comes to killing enemies within a time limit or staying above a certain health percentage. Enhancers are often neglected, but they exist to be used for the toughest content there is, and Battle Challenge definitely qualifies. If you run out, you can actually craft enhancers at the workshop in the Omega Flight HQ. And finally, pro tip number seven, dodges are OP. Fairly common knowledge that using a dodge will help you escape the dangerous area of a big incoming attack. What many new players don't pick up on right away is that using a dodge also grants a couple of seconds of invulnerability. Even if there's nothing urgently requiring a dodge, you should still be using your dodges pretty liberally as you'll greatly reduce your overall incoming damage, even from enemy basic attacks. Dodges are OP, abuse them. And that concludes today's lesson on Battle Challenge. In the next video, we'll go over the first PvP game mode, Omega War. So make sure to hit that subscribe button to ensure that you don't miss it. Also, feel free to slap that like button to appease the algorithm overlords. And lastly, feel free to share any helpful tips you've found super helpful in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for checking out this video, and I will see you guys real soon. Until next time. Peace!